So previously I did a video on what to look for when you're buying a 3D printer or buying a beginner 3D printer. Um, in this video I want to go over specifically this model. This is the Monoprice Select Mini or MP Select. On the bottom it says Monoprice 200 3D printer. I wanted to gear this video toward if you just bought this and you want to get your first print. Um, I'll go through all the steps you need to get your first print going and how to set it up. There's some other videos out there where people are unboxing it and showing all the parts. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to spend a half an hour going through each little step. Um, I'll just go over the key points you need to know. So the first thing they want you to do is check the bed level. Um, I have this set up right now. I have a piece of glass on here, but it'll be the same steps. I had to put a piece of glass and a, a Z spacer. Um, some things to look out for first. There's a plug. The Z spacer is down in here. You can see a little a little uh, switch that it hits when the extruder comes down. It hits that switch and should stop um, relatively close to your print bed. Mine was loose. It took me about an hour to figure that out the first time. It kept the extruder kept going down and hitting the print bed, and it would go dun, 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 and I couldn't figure out why until I went through all through, and I realized there was a switch that was loose. So ideally, when you turn this on and go to home. The, the, the uh, extruder should move, the bed should move back, and it should go to this front corner and stop. You should hear it hit that switch and stop and move up and down. If it starts grinding, it could be that loose switch. I don't know if that's all printers, um, but it did it to mine and it's done it a few times. Another thing people complain about is the power supply going bad. I haven't had that problem. I think it was just on some of the earlier ones. Another complaint is people said they don't get their filament. Um, this thing. I, it wasn't a big deal to me because I ordered my own filament and I ordered PLA and that's the stuff you want to start off with. You're just starting off, you're doing your first print, get a roll of PLA, um, which is great for beginners. It's, it's the most common filament people print with. It's easy. You don't need a heated print bed. Um, it prints cleanly. So um, to start, they say to check the bed level. You get a little Allen wrench and you go through, you, you, you press, you go in the menu. How about I show you? You go in the menu, you go over to the right one, and you go to home. And the printer will move and go to the home position. And you can hear that little click. That means you know it hit this Z axis switch and everything's fine. Next, they want you to take a piece of uh, paper, just any old paper, and you're sliding it under that extruder head, and you should feel slight resistance, um, very slight resistance. Then you move it to the back corner, you check it, you uh, go over to your uh, x-axis, and you select it by pushing the button in. Uh, once again, you might notice I have a different button here. Um, I 3D printed this because the other one, um, the uh, original button was this flush metal metallic button that was really uh, finicky, so this one is much easier to uh, use. And you use the x-axis and you move the extruder over to the other side and you check that with a piece of paper. All the way, you move it all the way to the other end and you check that with a piece of paper for clearance and you're adjusting these little... Uh, Allen wrench screws on every corner. And that takes a, a fair amount of time, depends on how accurate you want to be. But you go through and they always say, you know, the, the more accurate your bed level is, the better prints you'll get. Um, so you go through and spend some time doing that and then you can exit out. Next you want to load your filament. So you set it uh, you set it on this uh, spool holder here, which I'm not a big fan of this spool holder. I ended up making um, my own that'll hold it at a different angle. Um, I'll get into that later. But you, uh, you take your filament. They want you to cut it at a, a sharp point. You pull back on this clip here on the top, and you feed it through the, uh, the bushing and into this plastic tube. And you keep feeding it and keep feeding it until it stops. That means it's hit there. I can feel it stop right there. You can let go. And uh, that means it's hit this extruder. Another point people have complained is this plastic uh, clip here breaks. 
they gave me a second one in the bag. Obviously, it's something that's happened. There's also plans to print it, but there's a lot of force on this spring you gotta squeeze. So, uh, next, you'll look on the, uh, the filament you have and it'll show you a temperature. And most PLAs between 180, 190, and maybe up to 210. So I like to use 210. So I go into the temperature. Let me show you what that looks like. You, you can select which box you want. You click down on the button and you can go up to whatever temperature you want. So I'll say 210 and I'll say a heated print bed of 50. And you sit here and wait. Now you don't necessarily have to preheat your uh, uh, extruder. It will not print until it's up to the temperature that's specified in your settings. Um, that took me a while to understand. I would go and hit print, select file, and it would just sit there. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, something's wrong. And then it would start a minute later or whatever. That's because I didn't preheat the extruder and the bed. So normally what I do is I go through and I preheat it to about the temperature I want. Um, another thing is the micro SD card you get. Um, they give you a 256 megabyte card. This holds about 10, 20 prints, depending on the size. I ended up getting another one. I got a two gigabyte card um, for free. They were giving it away at a store here. They, you know, it's less than five, 10 bucks, but I definitely recommend getting a new card because that doesn't hold a lot. You're constantly deleting stuff off of it. Something you don't want to worry about. So the fan is turned on. You can see it's slowly heating up. Might take a, a couple minutes to get up to 210 degrees. You don't have to wait. You can go down to exit. It will continue to heat up. Now, a thing to note is if you start a print and hit stop, the temperature will turn off. So if you want to keep that high, you got to go back and preheat it. Anyways, you go to this print menu, you click down, and here's different files that I have saved on the card. Um, one thing I learned early on is you cannot put the files in a folder. I thought I would organize them into their own folders. It will not read it. It has to be in the, the base drive or whatever you call it of the card. So you can't have different folders. It doesn't, mine didn't like to print off that. So I, I have my different files and they're named, uh, you know, how I set them up or what program I used. Um, you can see I, I'm testing a, a chess piece, a queen chess piece, and I've tried different settings and different programs. So um, we can go with this. This is something I haven't printed yet. And you click on it. Now it's come to this menu and it shows 212 is what it is right now. And the target is 210. So that's good. This one says the target is 60 and it's only at 47. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to put a little bit of um, glue stick down on the print bed. This, you won't have this problem unless your prints aren't sticking. Um, when you get your printer, you'll have that white masking tape on it um, until that bubbles, and then you're gonna have to go buy a roll of a two inch wide blue painters tape. This was at Harbor Freight for two, three bucks. There are, you know, there's some fancy painters tape that's eight bucks. Some people say the green stuff that comes in the water airtight case. Um, this has worked fine. Um, but with the glass bed to get it to stick, PLA is pretty good, but I like to use a little bit of the glue stick to get that first layer stuck. Um, it should be ready to go any second. Another thing you want to have are um, some tweezers because this first layer never really sticks very well for me on the first layer so you have to get in there and pull it out. Um, so I'm gonna turn this down to let's say 55 and I'm gonna turn this down to 210 and when it's ready it starts to go. <laughs> it always goes to the home It'll put a little bead down, lift up, and then it starts going. And you gotta get in there with the tweezers and pull these things out. Um, 
You can designate all different stuff in the settings, whether you want a brim, no brim, infill. I like to do a, a small brim, um, but you sometimes have to get in there and pull it off. So it, nothing's really come out yet. There, I can see it coming out. And this is fine if you have a brim, even if it prints bad, it gives you a chance to get in there and pull stray pieces out. As I can see right here, this one is not stuck very well. Um, other than that, it seems to be stuck pretty well. That's a big thing is the settings and getting your first layer to stick to the print bed. And that's where the blue painter's tape comes in. Um, it's always a problem getting it to stick. So with PLA, I always use a heated print bed. People say you don't have to. I don't see what the problem is. I always set it to at least 50. For some other materials like PETG, I'll set it to 60 or 80 as high. This can go to, you can preheat it to 60, um, but when you go to print, you can actually go in and go to target and crank it up to 80 degrees Celsius. Um, but you can't preheat it to 80, but you can go in when it's printing to 80. Um, so this is all stuff that is in the settings where you're saying speed of the first layer and brim and things like that. Um, and that's a video I'll do later on where I go into the specifics of all the different settings you should, you should set up. Um, but you can see it's, there's some stray ends and the brim wasn't exactly right, but the brim is just to hold it in place. And for me, I use it to get that filament coming out. It seems like the first couple laps around the filament doesn't come out smoothly. Um, so I, it gives me a chance to get in there and pull things away with the tweezers. So you have to watch that first layer very closely. You might have to get in there with the tweezers and if it jams up or gums up on the extruder, you gotta pry it off. And that's why these long, thin tweezers are nice. Um, if it doesn't stick to the print bread or it clumps up, you gotta get in there and pull it off. Um, and you, like I said, you're gonna be printing on that masking tape that's already on there. Um, when that gets bad, you should probably go with some blue painter's tape. Um, and eventually, I've moved up to a glass print bed, which you can add. You have to put a spacer in for that Z uh, switch. Um, but I'm going to be experimenting with all different stuff like marble, and I have a sheet of smooth granite. I'm going to try that, see if that prints any better or easier, because it is a bit of a pain printing on masking tape every time, and it bubbles up, and you got to peel it off. And even the glass, you got to take it off of there and wash the, the glue stick off. So I'll have a whole bunch of... Uh, videos later where I go into specific tips and things I do and how to add the tape and glue stick and there's um, uh, nail polish remover which has acetone in it and Windex and all sorts of stuff that I've read and I've tried and some work and some don't um, but you can see it's it's maintaining that that temperature and print temperature um, it's at 9%, so this is going to take a while because this is a large part. But once that first layer is done and it starts getting into the infill, you don't have to watch it as closely. It's not like it's going to come off the print bed. It can, it definitely can, five, ten hours into a print. With large pieces, it can curl up and come off that print bed. So you have to watch that, but that first layer is the critical one. That's where you know if it's really going to stick. Um, Another issue I've had with this print printer and why I got a different uh, spool holder is this thing always jammed up. I don't know if you can see it, but this filament will jam on this reel. It'll get overlapped. One filament will overlap the other one. And that's why I made this, this one, which holds the filament at 90 degrees. Um, so I'll, I'll show you in a video on how I made that and why. Um, but early on, you're just watching that print and there's nothing you can do once it starts going. If it's bad, you have to hit cancel. It'll stop, it'll lift off, you have to pry that piece off. And that's something all to itself, prying that first piece off of here. When you're using a glue stick and a heated print bed, sometimes that part is really, really stuck on there. And you gotta get in there with a, a screwdriver or that uh, spatula thing they give you. And you're really prying that piece off. So you want it to stick on there, but sometimes it gets really, really stuck on there. So. Other than that, hopefully your print, your first print goes well on um, that little alien guy or the elephant. Hopefully all the, all the G code is set up in there. Uh, and like I said, you're not going to have to worry. All you have to worry about is loading the filament, turning it on,
putting the micro SD card in there, checking the bed level, and you hit print. That's all you got to do your first print. Later on, you learn about okay, I have this STL file that I downloaded from Thingiverse or whatever, like this. I downloaded it. You have an STL file. You put it into your program, Cura, which is provided. Um, they give you version 15.04.06. Now they're up to Cura 2.3 or something. Um, there's other programs like Simplify 3D and Slicer and Kiss Slicer and all sorts of stuff. But Cura is pretty good, especially 15 when you're just starting off because it doesn't have a million settings. It just has some important ones. And I'll do a video on all the settings I use. But you're not going to need that. You're going to, on your micro SD card, you're going to have that elephant and that little alien guy. You just put it in and go to print. Later on is when you learn, you go from the STL file to your G code, which is what this prints. You're embedding all that in the G code, all the settings, the temperature, the speed, the retraction. That's when you're really learning what each one of those things does. Um, but early on, you just want to get something printed. You're not worried about all these settings and how fast should I print the first layer and what should the sh shell thickness be. You just want it to print, and that those first parts are already set up for you. So um, I'll do another video where I where I go in and show each one of those settings and how to get a good print and how to import from the G code on those original parts, how you can import it into the settings. So hopefully it's all set up for you. But um, other than that, it takes anywhere from Depending on the part, you know, the smallest part I've ever printed took nine minutes. The largest part, you know, I've printed takes three, four, five hours. Some people with those big printers takes 24 hours or something crazy. But um, I don't know what those first prints were. I think they were half an hour. But you can't watch it all the time. But you definitely want to watch that first layer, come back periodically and check on it. See that this isn't binding. See that it hasn't lifted off or gummed up. If it does, you got to go in there. And you got to go to cancel print and it'll lift up and go to home and you got to pry it off and start again and figure out why it, it went bad but um, let me know if you have any questions if you're just starting off if you just bought one and you can't figure something out um, like I said I've had this for several months um, but other than that it should be pretty basic hopefully you get something printed that first day and then then you go into a printing other things and learning why and how to make that G code and all sorts of stuff. So good luck and uh, let me know what you think.